I have the third. Uh, our session dedicated to reliving and reliving uh, the Maghreb story. We have in this session a mix of scholar generations. We have a great veteran of the Jewish studies with uh, Professor David McNazzi, and we have two young scholars who begin their future long career in uh, the study of North African uh, juries. We will uh, begin by presenting Professor M McNazzi, but to present Professor McNazzi at the University Roma Tree is like to buy sand to Libya. Uh, is, uh, but he's very, very now, not only in Roma, but everywhere. But a few words about his ca long career and his multiple tasks and functions. Professor McNazzi is a scholar in Jewish studies, a psychoanalyst, a clinical psychologist, and an expert in Jewish music. And uh, his expertise on, on, mu on music, for me, is very, very appreciable. He is also a professor of clinical psychology and the psychology of religion a full member of the International Psychologic Association, chair of the International Master of Holocaust Studies in Roma III, et cetera, et cetera. We can continue till uh, this evening, and uh, we, we permit him to present us his uh, lecture about between history and between memory and history, the case of the Libyan Jews. Alors, uh, before beginning, we have a short session. We have three lecturers and only less than one hour and a half. Because of that, we can give everyone 20 minutes till 25 minutes to present and leaving some minutes after that for uh, discussion and comments. Please, Professor Magnazzi. <clears throat> thank you, Professor Shetrich, and thank you, thank you for all the colleagues uh, present here. I'm starting here with the, a quotation of Edmond Jabez, a poet from Egypt who lived in France and I met uh, many years ago. And I think this quotation could resolve the dilemma of my friend Haim Sadun when this morning spoke about the different vision between Shuraki from a line and from the other line. Uh, our common friend from Tunis and Paris uh, who wrote very interesting books. Okay. I think we have to go deeply to understand better the history of the Jews of Libya by a different approach. We have to mix historical compet compet uh, competence with the psychology and anthropology. If we don't combine these two, three different fields, it is very difficult to understand really also the different perception. I introduced yesterday the concept of klima. The concept of klima is coming from literature. Today we are working with many colleagues involved in research in literature to approach historical our aspect with the concept of klima. Self-perception, different generations have different perception of their history and about the history of their fathers. Uh, 
I remember that when I read the book of uh, Mordechai Cohen, Mordechai Cohen, speaking about the Jews of Libya, quoted them as slaves. He was writing uh, in the last years of the uh, 19th century. A very different perception if you compare it with the perception of the Jews of Libya at that time. Why? I think that the different perception of Mordechai Cohen that gave him the capacity to see better, deeply, the real situation of the Jews came from his Italian origin. His uh, grandfather was uh, captured by the Berbers and the Arabs. He was brought in Libya as a slave. The Jewish community paid to make him free. Mm -hmm. And after he was not able to come back to Genova, he was from Genova, he was a Kohen, uh, because the, the sea was not, the weather was not uh, a good weather, so he was obliged to wait in Libya for a time after the community asked him he, if he wants to stay, if he wants to stay in Libya, and they brought for him also a wife. And so he married in Libya, and his grandson wrote the most important book about the Jews of Libya. Mm -hmm. Why? because he was inside the border between different cultures. He was Italian, and at the same time, he was a, a Libyan Jew, so a multiple perception. And the Jewish community was not so glad when he published his memories and the practice and the customs and the activities of the Jews of Libya. He was accused for that because he gave to the other side the secret of the community, mm -hmm. words, communication. Uh, so he, he was a democratic, he was European, he was uh, coming from a different uh, uh, background. And he was a rabbi also. He was able to write also in a very nice Hebrew. I found uh, articles published also in Polonia. And he was really someone very important. And I think that Schluss, take many things from him, and he was not uh, so recognized in his life for the importance of his activity. Oh, the words slave, it's so hard. Mm -hmm. The condition of the Jews in Libya was very complicated. Before the Ottoman, the condition was not so easy. Every Jewish family was protected by and Muslim family and, and, and the, by a tribe, so a very difficult situation. I, th I say uh, uh, about the situation not inside the Tripoli, but outside of Tripoli. And uh, under the Ottoman rule, the situation was relatively better. And uh, when the Ottomans decided that also the Jews uh, were obliged to be to make a military service. A delegation of the Jewish community asked the Ottomans not to give the Jews this uh, privilege before the Arabs. So it is interesting to understand the very complicated relationship between a majority and minority with Islamic rule and the double identity of the Jews from a side. They were our friends, people uh, who worked with us. On the other side, they were Jews. And in trouble time, in trouble time, this double identity came to be one. And the theological approach to the Jews became many times dominant. For this reason, we have two Purims, but not just the Jews of Libya, also the other community, every community has its Purim. So a very complicated relationship, and it is difficult to understand that from an European perspective. 
the European perspective is completely different. We have had the ghetto, emancipation, open anti-Semitism, uh, different evolution, very complicated the, the situation of Europe, but it is also very complicated the situation of the Arabic countries. So I think that the double quotation of Shuraki and uh, 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 just a moment, I am very, Mami uh, uh, is my friend, so uh, I ask him to excuse me for these little lips. Lip. And, uh, and I think that we can understand the different perspective. Mimi uh, uh, studied the French uh, culture, was involved in political um, project of emancipation. So his perception was uh, influenced by a different perspective. And he was able to take out many things that for the Arabs are difficult to accept. I saw in my life how it was difficult among Arabs, friends, to understand that we were in a very hard situation with them. And when I spoke with the Libyan, ex-Libyan ambassador uh, in, in Vienna in 82, he told me that the pogrom of 45 wa was organized by the Zionists. And I told him, I saw you when you were young, and I know that you organized, you, wa you were one of the organizers of the pogrom of 67. Because I remembered him. I was a, a boy, but I was, uh, I practiced in my life the activity of observations, and I remembered him. He was one of the young organizers. And he told me, yes, I was. And so I told him, how you can say that the Zionists organized that? And he told me, because for Zionists, it was uh, clear. They wanted to, uh, to brought the Jews outside in Israel. He used a different uh, term. They were in contact with the British, a very paranoid or a vision, I don't say that in a personal way, a respect of the people, but I think that the, the, the way of the interpretation is very present in the Arabic culture. To see all these aspects as part of manipulation from the uh, Western dominant colonialism, and they don't see deeply what it connected with the history uh, of, of uh, their country. Very, I think that also this debate about uh, the pogroms, if the pogroms are coming from inside or they are a consequence of uh, the conflict in the Middle East, that's part of the political discussion today. It is part of the agenda of today. If you say that uh, it was as a consequence of the war in the Middle East, so. Uh, in, uh, the problem is not of the Libyans, and it is not true. Mm -hmm. Also, if it is true that it was part of the consequence, you have to reflect why it happened. Why? From a day to day, it completely changed. So my perspective, in a long time, 40 years, I reflect on that, from about the pogrom of 67 and the pogroms of 45 and the pogrom, and 48, of course, I know that we have uh, aware in using these words because the term pogroms uh, is coming from a different uh, perspective of studies, but is used today. And uh, to understand how changed it completely the life of the Jews of Libya from a day to a day. But the self-perception changed, I think, that it was a consequence of a long process, beginning before the Ottoman and after the Ottoman. A chain of, a change of identity and a collapsing mm -hmm. of the relationship between the two communities mm -hmm. and the collapsing of the uh, self-perception of the Arabic uh, majority as a dominant. They mm -hmm. became uh, uh, 
under the Ottoman rule before, but the Ottoman rule was an Islamic rule, and after they became under the uh, Italian rule and European, and so the perception of the Jews changed completely. Mm -hmm. the, the image of the Dimi. So I think that the pogrom of 45 in Libya was a part of a long process of transformation of the self-perception of the Arabic identity in Libya. Of course, there are many other things, historical, economical, uh, syndrome of, uh, uh, of, of the, the period of the period, all the things that you can introduce, also the, the economical crisis, uh, no water, uh, also economical problem, no food, many things. And change uh, situation, uh, liberation, war, liberation, many things. But I think that if you see the process in a long time, I think there are some self uh, affirmation by the Arabs as dominant in their country. And it was a parallel process in the Jewish identity, mm -hmm. self-identity as Zionists, as a people, and with a vision of a future different, and this gave to the Jews the possibility to change the self-image as humiliated people in a people going to freedom. And this could explain why for the Jewish community in Israel, they were cooperative, they were for symbiosis, uh, they didn't complain themselves all the time. So a very interesting history, and I think uh, it could be used uh, to understand better also if this little community, the history of the Maghreb uh, and the Jewish community. This is the synagogue in which I was when I was young I mean, for my bar mitzvah. And this synagogue in 43, the uh, Brigada Ivrit, the name was not that in that time. The name changed when they arrived in Europe because in 44, the British uh, the, uh, gave them the opportunity to call themselves as a, a Brigada Hebraica. And they were there in the synagogue for the festivity. I think, I remember that it was a taboo to mention the pogrom of November 45 and all June 48 when I was a child. My mother was speaking, my father was speaking, but all the time we were aware not to say anything outside of home. We call it that in, we have had at home a secret language, a secret vocabulary, and for us the word was homata. Homata, that it was the word, our secret mm. vocabulary. Of course, in my mind I tried to counteract thoughts of what had happened and might happen again with different, more positive and less distressing interpretation. It was my personal drama in my childhood. My personal imagination all the time. In my imagination, I sought evidence from, for a different historical explanation. Jewish self-defense action holding off the murderous crowd at the entrance to the Hara in 45 and in 48 particularly. I would have been about three or four years old when I would pretend to be engrossed in my playing in order to listen in on the ground ups conversation and try to understand why the funerals were held in the dark after lights out along a route protected by an armed military cordon that at first didn't intervene and then stopped 
the La Times from following their loved ones to their resting place. So this was my childhood, what I listened at home. And at home, in full view on the wall of the entrance hall to my home, my father used to keep a photograph of Muniel Gabay. You spoke yesterday about him, a strong man who had died young and who had played a leading role in defending the Jewish district from aggression. His long mustache shed an aura of protection over all of us. Another thing is the photo of Napoleon. My father used to put at home the photo of Napoleon. It takes time for me to convince him that Napoleon was not a Jew. But for my father, for a long time, he thought that he was a Marano because uh, he knew that he sent a letter to the Jews to create a Jewish state. Mm -hmm. We discussed a long time about that. And after he was convinced about that from the evidence, but two photos connected, one with the pogrom, one with the emancipation. And I think that these two aspects are particular of my personal life, but could illuminate many aspects of our community in that time. So it takes time. I wrote a paper of 60 pages. It is for the ACTA when we will publish. But it is interesting to know how it changes our identity during the time and our perception between 100 years before until 67, until 48. And so I have had two dreams. One dream in which I dreamed that we were benedicted by God, all the people. And so it was an explanation in my dream of what it happened. I transformed it in my dream, the Exodus of 48. I dreamed it. Mm -hmm. I changed it in my dream. In another fantasy that I have had 40 years after, when I was very tried in an airport for a moment, and I saw Tel Aviv and Tripoli connected. And so in my fantasy, I understood that I became really free. Mm -hmm. I was able to go from a side to a side in my fantasy. I was not obliged to be a prisoner of nostalgia. Thank you.